Did you know that you have been gifted by God because God has got a purpose for your life? And in this video, I want to help you to take steps forward in discovering what your gift is and what God's purpose is for your life so that you would go ahead and do just that and live the bigger life that God has purposed for you. Hi there, my name is Swen and welcome to my YouTube channel. I uh, just want to share some thoughts with you for a moment because we are gifted because we have been called. You know, recently I had a, I bought this uh, TV unit and it's actually the, like, it's a beautiful TV unit. It's the first one I've ever owned that we bought. And uh, when we ordered it, we, it came in like a flat pack furniture, right? And which is fantastic when you've got everything you need for it. You know, originally I thought when you order these kinds of furnitures, then you're going to get the screwdriver. You're going to get everything you need in order to build it. When I opened it up, I realized there are some stuff that there are some things that I need. And so we, I went through it, laid everything nicely on the floor and began to, you know, piece the things together and looked at the at the instruction manual. You know, with the instruction manuals, it's kind of like you need a degree just to read the instruction manuals. But my biggest fear was that I was going to build it and realize that I'd put something in the wrong place at the end and have to dismantle it again and rebuild it. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. I took so much time over every page to make sure that all the pieces lined up together, all the right screws were in the right place. Now, thankfully, I put all the screws in the right places, but I got one of the panels mixed back to front. And so I had to go back a couple of steps, dismantle this TV unit and put it back together. And through the whole process, I used this um, a screwdriver now my hands you know being so soft and gentle they they started getting really hard i started getting blisters on my hands because i was using the screwdriver and the more i would be working on it the uh, the more it would slip and it would just create even more pain in my hand and i thought you know what i really needed i needed an electric screwdriver because this i think the build would have gone at least 20 percent or 30 percent faster without the injury but anyway i think that's the same for us you know god's called us to do good works in fact in ephesians 2 verses 10 it says we are his masterpiece or his handiwork and we've been created anew in jesus um, and for good works that he has prepared in advance for us to do so god has got a good work for us but what we need to have is we need to have the tools in order to do that work otherwise we're just left frustrated and in pain and so this is the thing this is what i'd like to leave you with for a moment is that if God has given us work, good work to do, then he's also gifted us to do that work. And on the other side, if God has given us a gift, then that would make sense that he's actually prepared a job for us to do. I mean, how many good employers would employ you and for a job, but not give you the tools in order to fulfill that job? That would lead to frustration and all sorts of conflict. And I think within the body of Christ, we've got people who either know that they're gifted but don't use their gifts or people that um, are trying to serve God in ways but are neglecting or don't, aren't aware of their gifts. And here's the thing, that your calling in life is connected to the gift that God has given you. And gifts are not like ornaments that we put on display. Look how gifted I am. Look at what an amazing teacher or barista or musician I am. It's actually, they're not ornaments to be put on display. Our gifts are actually tools in order to be used. And the thing that I love about gifting is that God has given a grace for us to use our gifting. And often the thing that we think we're gifted in is maybe not the thing that's gifted in. It's sometimes difficult to see our own gifts because, you know, it comes so easy to us. We think everybody else should be doing it, should be able to do it so easily as well, but we don't. And so we're blind to it. But actually, the, the fact that it's easy for you is because God has graced you for it. It's a spiritual gift that he has empowered to believers to use a tool to build up other people. And what I've discovered is that, and through scriptures, that gifts are not for you. Gifts are for other people that God uses through you. He amplifies certain things in our lives that is a grace that it's easy for us but difficult for others so good question is what comes so naturally to you that you think other people should be good at it but they aren't for me it's 
you know, I, when, I, when I think about thinking about vision, I'm thinking everybody should have great vision. Everybody should be thinking about the future. But actually, it doesn't come so naturally to people or ideas. Ideas, are, like I feel like I always have so many ideas that run through my mind. But other people, they don't have the same amount of ideas. And that's not bad. It's actually good because it means that I have a gift that can help other people and they have a gift that can help me. If you and I pursue the calling that God has placed on our life, the great work, the thing that he has prepared for us, the thing that makes us come alive and to go, wow, I was built for this. I was meant for this and living a life of calling, of purpose and fulfillment. If we are pursuing that outside the gift that he has given to us, what it will lead to is frustration, not joy. It won't be something that's done easy. It's something that feels like it's so draining. And very often we try to serve God, but not using the gift that he's given us. And it is like a frustration. It, it does feel like hard work all the time. But God is a, he is a good God. He is, he, and when he makes masterpieces, he makes them with intention. He doesn't create round pegs for square holes. God didn't make you one way to use you another way. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life and a way for you to fulfill it by giving you the tools or the gifts that you need in order to fulfill them. So the bottom line I want to share with you before I give you three practical points on, on how to walk in that is this. If you treat your gift like an ornament you'll put on the shelf, you'll put it alongside your calling and your purpose that remains unfulfilled. When you have a gift, it's not for other people to go, wow, you have that gift. It's for you to say, God, help me to use this gift. Because when you use your gift, your gift will work. When you use your gift, it's actually going to lead you in calling. It's going to lead you in purpose. It's going to unfold. You're going to get better at it. And it's going to open unique doors for you. So what, what should you and I do? What, what should we do about this? Three things. Number one is identify your gift. How can you use a gift you don't know you have? So you've got to go on a process of discovery. Oftentimes it looks like trying lots of things and the things that make you come alive when you do them or the things that are really, really easy and you get great joy out of, those are the gifts that God has given to you. And those gifts are there to build the church and those gifts are there for your mission in the world, your purpose, your calling in life. Now for you, it might seem like it's a small thing or it's it's not that important. How can I use this? Maybe it's, you know, um, crafting or something like that. No, God, that's an avenue that you can explore and you can do and you can bring. And maybe what it means is you bring other people around the table with you because you love crafting. And in that moment, you're actually building relationships, building bridges, an opportunity to connect with people and help them to know more about Jesus or help them through difficulties in life. You, you don't know. So the thing is, identify your gifts. If you have, um, if you've tried lots of things and you're still not quite sure, uh, a, gift a gift assessment or discovery tool would be super, super helpful. In our church, we use um, something like the DISC profile as well as a spiritual gift assessment. And I'm sure that if you just type that into Google, you'll find one that will be helpful to you. So number one is identify your gift. Maybe what you need to do is ask the people closest to you, hey, what, what is it that's natural, what, that, that's a gift? What, what do you see in me that... That I must keep that I should keep on doing and if you would be able to be in a position where you can do more of what makes you come alive your whole Christian experience goes to another level and people actually get helped in the process and then you also know to do less of the things that are just draining you and killing you inside your gift identify your gift the second thing is develop your gift it's one thing to identify it and know about it but God actually expects us to develop it and to become better at it so that we can serve more people or be more effective when we use it. You know, God gives us seed and that seed has to grow. God gives us something in seed form. He gives you your gift in seed form that when it uses, it takes time to grow it. And our responsibility as the bearer of these gifts is actually to develop them and to become skilled at them. So develop them, learn about them, read about them. If you've got a gift of generosity, read books about it, listen to podcasts about it, start being exercising parts of generosity where you can learn what environments it works and what environments it doesn't work. And the third one, and this is going to sound really, really obvious, 
but it's actually use your gift. Like your gift only works when you use it, right? And so to find a way, a place, an environment to deploy the gift that God has given you, like Paul says in Romans 12, if your gift is encouragement, then encourage people well. Like do it gladly. Find intentional and specific ways to encourage people. Remember, your gift is not an ornament to be put on a shelf for display. It's a tool to be used. And when you start using this tool, this gift, when you start exercising your gift, if it's teaching, if it's hospitality, if it's generosity or kindness or mercy, what's going to happen is you're going to come alive. You're going to find joy and excitement. You're going to start taking steps in your calling and bigger doors are going to open and more effective work is going to open up. And people around you are going to be helped. They're going to be inspired and they're going to be developed. And so our gift is something that God gives us to build up other people. I hope this helps. If it has, and if you're interested in more videos like this one, would you please hit the subscribe button? Um, it really helps this channel. And if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And please let me know of any questions you have in the comments section. And I'll try to leave as many resources available to you in the description. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. See you next time.